Hey friends, I am so excited you are here. This is Minimalese. My name is Becky Truda, and on this channel, we talk about decluttering and minimizing and living your best life. So today, I put together 10 strategies that are going to help you stay organized, get decluttered, and live in your house a little more peacefully. So let's go over number one. The very first rule that you have got to start getting in the habit of, which took me a little bit of time, but it is called declutter regularly. So when you are walking around your house, if you are seeing things that you know that you and your family are not using, then put a box by your door, put a bag by your door, whatever you happen to have, and put it in there. Get it out of your house and out of the way as quickly as humanly possible. As you are going through your things in the morning, if you are looking through your clothes and you are finding things that you are not wearing, then get rid of them right then. Bring them down to the box or at least throw them out of the drawer and come back to it later. But decluttering regularly is going to help you to maintain that decluttered house that you are dreaming of. But number two is to design specific places to put your things you that you want to keep making sure that the things that you want to keep are very specific to that area. So I'll give you an example. In my bathroom, I have a basket that has hair and band-aids. And in this basket, I have another basket that holds our hair things. This is helping me make sure that I am staying in a manageable amount. And it also gives a signal to everyone else in my family that this is where these things go. It makes it very obvious. We don't put it anything other than headbands and scrunchies in this small container that's labeled for hair. So the more you can get very specific about exactly where your things should go, the easier it's going to be to keep it organized. All right, friends, so number three, I know it's a little dark in here, but number three is to utilize your vertical spaces. So as you can see behind me, we hang our mop on the wall. We have one of those uh, command hook kind of things that collapses and holds the broom in place. That way I don't have to have it just laying on the ground because everything that you can get off the surface of the ground is going to help your rooms and your space just look more organized and more put together. So finding vertical spaces like shelves, or if you can find some really good storage solutions like these command strips, which I'll link below, will really help get things off of the floor, which always makes things look a little bit better. And it will help you use that up space, that vertical space that is just completely wasted in most houses. All right, friends, so number four is to invest in storage solutions that will work. Now, when I say that, I know that sounds like such a lofty thing to think about, but what I did as a mistake, and I hope that you can avoid this, is I bought things over and over again from the container store, and then I would get rid of them within a month or two because they just didn't fit and didn't work. So measure your space and really live in your space for a little while and figure out what you actually need. So the storage baskets that you can see behind me in the cabinets, these are little tiny baskets that I found from Target. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I do not have a pantry. This is a 1960s home. It's never had a pantry built, though I would actually really love one. Um, and so I needed small baskets, but I wanted those small baskets to also have a designation about what's going in them. And so as you can see behind me, hopefully, that these baskets are very specific for what I'm putting in each one. And I measured to make sure they fit so I didn't make that mistake of getting the wrong thing all over again and having a solution that just doesn't work. All right, friends, and that kind of goes with number five. Number five is to invest in a system that's going to work. So you wanna use things like my favorite tool for organizing, which is a label maker. I'm gonna show you the baskets that are in our cabinets behind me. And these baskets all have a label on them on what I'm expecting to put in each basket. It makes putting food away when you are ready much easier. Also, I just showed you the baskets in my bathroom and in my bathroom, they are labeled hair and band-aids, medicine, things like that. So I know exactly what is supposed to go in each. It really helps me put things away faster and helps my brain not to wander off and think about putting them somewhere else. And it just helps my whole family know where everything is and where it should go so that we can all kind of work together to put our things away. I'm gonna link my label maker below because I've had it for a couple years now and it has been a rock star. I've already bought a few of the replacement tapes and it just keeps working forever. And now I don't label absolutely everything, it's just not necessary, but 
really find those areas that you find yourself or your family not putting your things back in the right place. Putting a label on something is an amazing way to remind yourself and remind your family where things go. And I have found that when I do label things, I get a lot less questions, which if you're a mom or a wife, we all know we get a lot of questions about where things are and putting a label on them has really helped to cut that down a lot. All right, friends, so number six is one of the most important, and that is to maintain a cleaning routine. So I've talked about before that I vacuum my house every day. Now we got a Roomba kind of thing that cleans our main floor, which I'll link below if you're interested. It's like an off-brand one, but it's worked very well. But also just maintaining your house is going to mean vacuuming up those little places, picking up the things that are left out that are not supposed to go where they go. Something that really held me back is that I often am the kind of person that I will walk by things over and over and over again until finally I'm like, okay, it really bothers me, I'll put it away. So if that's you, then use the minute or less, 30 seconds or less rule, which basically just says that if it's gonna take you less than 30 seconds to put it away, then just do it. Because if you're anything like me, it's not like you just forget about it. You know that those things are sitting on the staircase but you just don't feel like putting them away. Well, the second you actually do, it's one less thing on your checklist that's going around in your brain over and over again. So maintaining some kind of cleaning routine, it doesn't need to be where you print off a beautiful calendar off Pinterest, though I've tried this before, they usually don't work for me, but it's just a little bit of cleaning every single day. All right, friends, so number seven is to create closets that are functional. And this is something that did take us a couple of years to get to. It wasn't top priority, but it has helped so incredibly much. Once I decided that I didn't want to have a dresser in our room anymore, I really wanted to create a closet that made a lot of sense for us. And while the whole kits that you can get on Home Depot or Lowe's are great, and I'm sure they work well for a lot of people, we had kind of an odd closet and we really wanted exactly what we thought was going to work for us. So my husband bought these rods on Amazon. All right, friends, so number seven in the 10 ways to really organize and declutter your house and keep it that way is to optimize your closet space. So the closet behind me is something my husband and I redid ourselves. We ended up just painting it a light color. We put in some poles behind uh, me and on my husband's side, he has two as well, that we can hang up our clothes on. We also created these little shelves. And I will say, if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, they are so helpful in cutting the wood usually. We've always had a good experience. And then the brackets are actually just from Amazon, which I can link those to below if you're interested in making some shelving yourself but creating a closet that really makes sense for your needs. I really wanted our clothes to be separated. I wanted to easily be able to see what I have without having to go through my husband's clothes as well. When we had one really long bar in here, our clothes would just shuffle back and forth and it just never looked very appealing. And so over time, we really figured out what we wanted. We wanted a place to hang my husband's ties and my necklaces. We wanted enough shelving so that we could have some folded clothes and baskets on them too. So really thinking about exactly what your needs are, doing some measurements before you go and buy anything will help you keep your space a lot more organized. All right, friends, so number eight did take me some time for a good reason, and that's finding multi-purpose, multi-function furniture. Not just buying something that you think looks pretty, but really thinking about it in the long term, is it going to fit the needs that you're really looking for in your family. So when you look at my couch and you look at my coffee table, they were thought of very intentionally. I didn't just buy these pieces because I thought they looked cute or great together, which I do think they look good, but that's a side note. It's because I knew they were higher up and they were light. These are two key things in my life that I always found were very difficult to deal with with my old, oversized uh, coffee table that was very difficult to lift and clean under and the old couch I had which was a sectional and it was too low to the ground that you could vacuum underneath it so you'd have to move the whole thing or just forget about it and just try not to think about the stuff that were under the couch. So when I ended up getting new things and was ready to move on I made sure that I didn't just buy the first or in my case the cheapest thing that I could find because I knew that I had done that over and over again, and that was not suiting my needs. I am so guilty of buying furniture off of Marketplace just because it was a good deal, and 
then figuring out it doesn't fit in my space, keeping it for a few months, moving it all around my house, and then getting rid of it all over again. So I was so tired of that repeated, repeated story of my life. And so what I decided to do is really pay attention to exactly what I needed. If you guys enjoy learning about minimalism and decluttering, then remember to put a heart emoji down below. It helps this little tiny channel grow. And it also lets us all know that we are all organizing, decluttering, and trying to live a more minimal life together. All right, friends, so you are getting the baskets and you are hanging up the hooks and putting the shelves where they need to go. What I want you to do now is I want you to look around your house at all of the paper and photo clutter that you have and I want you to start working on digitalizing it. I want you to start putting it on your computer or on your phone, taking pictures of it and then getting rid of it. If you are anything like me or I feel like most of us, we hang on to things they are sentimental or they are great photos from when we were younger and you feel like Back in my day, they didn't have your phone all the time. So these photos are precious. But the problem is when we have boxes and boxes of these old photos that we go through maybe once a year and they're just sitting around for maybe one day in the future, somebody else wants to see them. But what I want you to do is I want you to put it on your phone. I want you to put it on your computer. I want you to create a file where you can store those things so that you can go back and look at them and enjoy those old pictures but also that you don't have to hang on to all these boxes and boxes of old photos. Another good idea is that if you really wanted something that was tangible, that you can take all those photos and you can make photo books on Shutterfly. I think they make them, um, my mother-in-law does them all the time. And the nice thing is that you can put them out. My daughter loves to look through these books and I don't have to have all these random photos just everywhere stored all around my house or in a huge box. I can have one little book with just our very favorite photos. Something else I've talked about, which is a great gift for anyone, is also one of those uh, photo frames that you can put your photos onto. You can share photos with other people, and you can also digitalize your photos and even your letters and put them on there. And so you can just see them, but not have to have them physically with you all of the time. So that's just an idea, and that's gonna help clear up a lot of that paper clutter. All right guys, so I'm so glad you made it. This is one of my favorite. Number 10 is just to review your spaces. There are so many times where I just sat there with things that were obviously not working, storage solutions that I had tried and I knew I spent a lot of money on them. They just weren't the right size I needed or they weren't functioning in the way I thought they would. Review those spaces and really pay attention to what is going wrong. Maybe the baskets are too small. Maybe the hooks are too high. Think about what is going on and really pay attention for a little while and see if you can figure out what the problem is. Once you figure out what the problem is, really do your research, measure things out and find the right solution. Lower the hooks, buy some extra ones, label things if they're being misplaced and figure out ways that your family can work a little bit smarter, not harder. If you've enjoyed learning about minimalism and decluttering and organizing your beautiful life, then remember to hit subscribe and I will see you guys soon.